How's it going guys? It is me, THE Dom Fanatic. Welcome to my week one game of the PPL Season 2. It's quite frankly bizarre that I am here saying this because I retired from Mons about three years ago now and I pretty much swore that I was never coming back. Yet here I am coming back to what I believe to be the best draft league around. Of course, I am rather uh, biased because it was my creation all those years ago. Um, but Jack invited me back for season two, as you will have known at this point, because you may have seen my draft analysis. You may have seen my coach interview. Uh, you may have seen some other stuff on my draft streams. So my week one game here is against Matt, who is also known in the community as Dr. Slacking uh, and his Cotswold Whimsicots. He's a really decorated coach, uh, a really skilled battler and someone in the league who is probably seen as one of the, the, the better battlers in here. Um, so I couldn't have really got much of a tougher week one opponent, um, but we'll deal with the cards we're dealt and see what we can do. Uh, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you do leave a like and please feel free to drop a subscription uh, if you do enjoy the content, as I obviously have many more weeks of content to upload uh, when it comes to the PPL. Uh, so thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll leave you to watch the rest of the video. Looking at the team we're bringing this week, well, first of all, I should probably show you Matt's team. Here on the screen, we have got Matt's draft. I have obviously blurred out the score because that has been updated. Uh, before I could take the screenshot. Um, Matt does have the Darkrai, the Tornadus Ferian, Azumarill, Baxcalibur, Jirachi, Sandy Shocks, the Delphox with the Fire Grass and Fighting Terratypes, the Hisuian Decidui with the Grass, Electric, Dark Terratypes, Kamala, Quillfish, and Cacturn. Main threats for me, uh, looking at my opponent's draft here, Definitely the Azumarill. My team really struggles to deal with that. Initially, if you looked at this last season, Gastrodon would have probably closed down Azumarill pretty well, but it doesn't have a Trailblaze, which means Gastrodon really struggles against Azumarill. Baxcalibur is a huge issue for my team. Corviknight is my best answer. And when I say best answer, it's my best answer, but it's not really an answer. Um, Jirachi, I'm really fearing a sub Calm Mind or a Calm Mind free attack set here because the combination of Fairy Steel and Psychic is really potent against my team. Sandy Shocks is a huge issue for me. Regieleki has a really good matchup into a lot of my opponent's draft here. Except for Sandy Shocks can completely shut it down. Um, and that's kind of deterred me from bringing it, as you'll see, or might have seen already. Delphox could potentially be an answer for the Iron Moth, if he decides to bring an Assault Fest set. Um, otherwise, I'm not too fearful of many of the other things. Quillfish could come as an answer for Moth as well, but Moth does obviously get Discharge. Um, I feel like Moth probably might win that 1v1. So those are the kind of like threats, obviously Dark Ryan and Taunty are just threats in their own rights, regardless of whatever the matchup is. Um, if you aren't aware of what my draft is, then I would highly recommend you do check out my draft analysis video, which I have uploaded the previous week. So looking at the six mons I've decided to bring this week, we have got Macho Man, the uh, Shifu, and uh, another disclaimer, I didn't come up with the nicknames for my team, my fiance did, and she has no idea about Pokemon, so that was quite entertaining. Explanations for all of that will be in the draft analysis video as well. So first up, we have got a Shifu single strike. Um, a really good matchup against Matt this week. Uh, Wicked Blow, the resistances that Matt has. Um, One's Darkrai, which is weak, obviously, to the fighting moves, uh, as well as U-turn. Azumarill is the biggest answer to this thing, but I do have a lot of things that can offensively check Azumarill. Um, otherwise, I think he really struggles. He does have Intimidate on. Quillfish, of course, but Wicked Blow, always critical hitting, means it sort of nullifies that. And other than Thunder Punch, Wicked Blow is probably my best option to click against Quillfish if it does come. Um, we are running Choice Scarf because the Scarf allows me to outspeed Torn, T and the Darkrai. Um, also allows me to outspeed the Delphox and Wicked Blow is really free to click once Azumarill has gone and once Darkrai has been weakened, which I think is pretty easy to do with the six I've got here. Um, Thunder Punch is there for Azumarill. U-Turn is there for Momentum. A lot of my Pokemon in this draft have Momentum using moves. Um, so if I can bring U-Turn 
and have space for it on a mono, I probably will bring it because the momentum shift uh, can be huge with an offensive team like mine. And then close combat is there, just a strong stab. I'm fearing potential Culver Berry on the Jirachi, which means close combat, two close combats would KO a max HP Jirachi, um, as well as a Wicked Blow. Um, but I am kind of thinking it's going to be Culver on Jirachi, which is why close combat is a nice alternative as well. Overall, it's just a really strong stab move, which can do a lot of damage to a lot of Matt's team. Even the Azuma won't appreciate that. I do have to run the Jolly Nature to make sure I outspeed Baxcalibur. That's another reason why I have Choice Scarf. It's kind of like a contingency plan for if Baxcalibur decides to set up a Dragon Dance. If it sets up two Dragon Dances, then I have to hope and pray. Uh, next up, we have got Moffy the Iron Moth. Uh, heavy G Boots during... Uh, what I haven't actually mentioned, this is version 3 of my team, so I've changed it quite a few times. Um, running it through kind of like, we'll call it a front office, but you know, a, a, a group of friends of mine to kind of establish what the best team would be. Uh, I was originally Booster Energy and Moth was going to be my end game. Um, but we did shift that to Heavy Duty Boots because Toxic Spikes would be really nice and Moth has got the great potential to actually break Matt's draft um, as well as kind of like clean it up. With Scarfed uh, Shifu, that's also got the opportunity to clean up late game. So we did kind of decide to actually let's shift it a bit. Let's put a lot more power into it because I was booster energy. So I could Quark Drive boost my speed. Um, but if you want to do that, it means you have to under invest in special attack. Well, actually the raw power of Iron Moth was really nice in this and uh, would be really nice in this matchup. So we did change it to have enough speed to outspeed. I think it was Delphox. Um, the rest of my special attack and then the best, uh, the rest of what I have in to bulk to help with any aqua jets from the azumarill really simple sludge wave and fiery dance cover off each other's kind of like weaknesses and resistances really well and discharge is there for the potential quillfish um as well as the chance to paralyze anyone who decides to try and switch into this moth if i do land a paralysis against anything that switches in i will most likely outspeed them um, so I can then click Sludge Wave, Fiery Dance, or Toxic Spikes, or Switch if I really want to. Um, but Moth is going to be huge for me in this game because it's probably the best thing I have on the 6 here for Azumarill. Next up is Tate the uh, Gardevoir. We are running Heavy Duty Boots. I was initially lefties, but kind of talking to Jack, he convinced me to run Heavy Duty Boots on this. I'm running the Trace ability because we do know that my opponent does have the Tornado, so if I can trace the... Um, regenerator that would be huge for Gardevoir because it is probably my best answer for Delphox and for Darkrai as well. We have Moonblast, Shadow Ball, Thunder Wave, Knockoff. My opponent really struggles to switch into Moonblast other than with Jirachi and Delphox, both of which are weak to Ghost, so therefore I have Shadow Ball on the set. Thunder Wave is another option here to try and slow down the faster mons, so as I said this is something that will be coming in on Darkrai, will be coming in on Delphox, will be coming in on the Tornadus. Thunder Wave, if they decide to stay in, or if Matt decides to stay in, is going to be a huge bonus there. Um, the Bit of Yellow Magic helps regardless of what it's on. And then my fourth move is Knock Off. I didn't even realise this thing got Knock Off in the new update, um, and I don't know if many of my opponents will. Knock Off is Knock Off. You know, the main reason you run it, unless you're Weavile, is to get rid of items. It's really good utility. Um, my opponent's switch into this thing is probably going to be the Jirachi or the uh, the Delphox, like I said. Knocking off a potential Colber Berry or using up a potential Colber Berry would be huge. Um, so that's why I was deciding to kind of like run knockoff on this thing over the potential Wish support. Um, I think that's pretty much the only thing I can really say about Gardevoir. So moving on to Spiky, the Corviknight. Um, We've got Iron Head, Body Press, Roost, and U-Turn. I was kind of forced to bring Corviknight this week because it's the best thing I have for both Azumarill and Baxcalibur. Um, the only issue with that sentence is it's the answer to both of Azumarill and Baxcalibur. Either of them can set up, and either of them can absolutely delete Corviknight, and that's because I haven't really got anything on my draft that can answer them very well at all. Because it's my answer to Azumarill, I do need to run Iron Head. Body press is there because obviously my defense stat is higher than my attack. Um, it'll do neutral damage to the Jirachi. Um, it's obviously super effective against the Darkrai as well as the uh, Baxcalibur 2. Um, Roost is there obviously for longevity and then U-Turn is there for some slow U-Turn momentum. Um, 
which could be quite useful this game because if I can then get one of my faster mons in, uh, like Iron Moth or my Scarfed uh, uh, Shifu, then using this as a pivot would be really nice. I've already said this thing is here for um, for Bax Calibur and for the Azumarill. It's my best answer I have in my entire draft, and by that I mean it's an answer. If that, it's not really that great of one. Um, but that's cool tonight. Next up, I've got Dino Dave, possibly the greatest nickname that my partner came up with for any Pokemon ever. Um, we are running Heavy Duty Boots. Um, I don't think I can really forego the ability to switch up moves. I really need that um, because of the Jirachi. Um, if I am faster than a Jirachi, a Nice Beam into an Earth Power won't kill, but it'll do a lot of damage. Weakening Jirachi that much will then free up my uh, Cleavor, which you'll see in a minute. But also, if I can kill the Jirachi with an Earth Power, that really frees up Kyurem against my opponent's draft. Um, we are running Freeze Dry, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Trick, Meteor with Heavy Duty Boots. Um, I didn't really think this week was right for Dragon Dance. Um, after speaking to Matt after the battle, um, he was very much scared of Dragon Dance uh, with High School Spirit and Scale Shot. Um, but I think Freeze Dry was the main thing that I needed here for the Azumarill. Azumarill. I think AV Max HP still takes over half from Freeze Dry from this thing. Um, and Play Rough won't kill me back unless it's heavily offensive. Um, Securem is probably my best answer to the Azumarill on the six that I've brought, which is a terrifying thought because it's not really an answer. Um, Draco is just there for pure power uh, to, to click. You know, I'm, it's a stab move off 130 special attack, it's going to hurt. Ice Beam is there for more raw power as well, once the Jirachi's gone, um, or the Azumarill. And Earth Power is there for coverage. Uh, the EVs are here, pretty much enough speed for me to outspeed Bax Calibur if he is not a DD or Scarf set. Um, because obviously Draco is going to kill that thing. Freeze Dry might also potentially do a lot of damage as well as Ice Beam. Ice Beam? Ice Beam. Um, so I am back Special Attack. I've then got a bit in HP and Defense. Ultimately to help with the Azumarill's play roughs uh, again. But the bulk of this thing is really good. It's, uh, what is it? I think it's 130 HP, 95 in each defenses. Not 135, it's 130. It's 125 in HP, sorry. With 90 in each defense. Um, so this thing's natural bulk will allow me to live pretty much any hit I want to and get off some massive damage. So, um, yeah, Kyurem's going to have a big part to play in this game. Finally, we've got Brian, the Cleavor. Um... <laughs> Brian, the old man, as my partner described him, um, a combination of Stone Axe and X's are really, really hurt Matt's draft, but also Stealth Rocks are really nice against his team as well. Um, he's got Delphox, he's got Bax, and he's got Tornadus that are weak to it. I can see all three of those coming to this matchup, and if he doesn't want to run boots on them all, then they're going to be taking 25% on each switch in, which is huge. Um, his only uh, options for removal are Decidueye and the Kamala. Kamala can't really do a lot of damage to Cleavor because of the rock typing, um, but also Decidueye doesn't appreciate an Exorcist unless it's fully defensive. Um, we are able to run the Adamant uh, Nature on this because I can't outspeed Bax anyway if it is Scarfed or a plus one. Um, and then the rest of Matt's draft is actually slower than this thing to the point where I can run Adamant over Jolly, which is really nice. Um, I could obviously run Jolly if I wanted to give up some raw power for some more bulk, um, which could potentially help with the Azumarill. But just to give you guys an example of what Adamant lets me do, uh, if it's a max HP Azu, Stone Axe does like 60%. So Azu isn't a switch in. Aqua Jet can't one shot this thing unless I take some prior damage and get to like 60, 70% health. Um, so Stone Axe is almost free against my opponent's draft other than the Jirachi which doesn't appreciate X Scissor um, and U-Turn can give me the momentum. Brick Break is almost kind of there as filler uh, mainly because in case Matt brings screens on something and that was it. The other option I had was Close Combat but I didn't really think Close Combat did much for me compared to what X Scissor and Stone Axe would do already. So those are the six I decided to bring. Tell me what you think my chances are in this matchup. Um, hopefully this week one game is going to go really well. Um, so I'll see you for the battle. Okay, so we're here for the battle uh, against Matt and the Cotswold Whimsicots. Um, to put it bluntly, I'm not very confident, um, which isn't great for a week one game. I've never played Matt before, and I don't know if I've said this in the intro because I'm doing this before the intro. Matt's a very decorated 
uh, coach who does so well in Gen 8. And he's not done bad in Gen 9 so far in Wi-Fi draft. Um, obviously this is me coming back, so he's probably one of the worst people I could have faced from week one. I will of course have gone over his draft already, but his team is full of so many threats and I do think that I probably have the worst matchup out of the two teams. There's certainly some things on my team, like uh, Shifu, um, which can cause absolute havoc to his team. Um, but overall, Azumarill, terrifying. Uh, Baxcalibur, terrifying. Not too worried about Tornadus um, with the Gardevoir, but we'll go with what we've got. We'll search for the battle because I do know that Matt is, uh, is now ready and waiting. So let me quickly get my damage calc open. And then I should probably also have my notepad open to so I can track kills and stuff. Right, so what's he got? His six R. Okay, so he's got Dark Rai, uh, Decidui, Bax, uh, Azu, Delphox, and Jirachi. So, my lead from team building was always going to be Klebor. Um I was originally AV. I'm really surprised there's no Sandy Shocks. Um, this is the third team that I built, and the first two I had Reggie Alecki in both of them. Because Alecki kind of goes nuts uh, against this team when Sandy Shocks is gone and uh, Bax is weakened. The fact that he didn't bring it is quite honestly mind boggling um, but as soon as Azu is weakened my cleaver goes in um, I'm going to stick with it as my lead because it does let me get rocks up I can get a nice U-turn off if it doesn't lead with um, Rachi it's incredibly free U-turn his team doesn't like U-turn um, good luck have fun Matt, of course, um, I just don't want to get 6 0 basically. That would be the nicest thing. He also didn't bring um, Quillfish, which is a surprise, because I thought that could also come for the uh, Ashifu, and also potentially for the Iron Moth. Um, so if I can get Toxic Spikes up, that will really help. It does lead to CGI. Okay, that's really good. What does X Scissor do? I am adamant. Um, so if I go to CGI here, uh, you are Hisuian. Let's assume. Okay, so X is all. X is what? X Scissor does do 54 to 67. U turn does 31 to 37. That's if he's defense invested. If he's got no defense, X Scissor does 63 to 75. And this is his defogger. Um, so, I feel like Exazor is free. Um, I don't want to take Chip and Corbinite because that's my best answer for the Azumarill. Um, otherwise he hasn't got switching at all to Exazor. So I'm going to click Exazor. Um, he does stay in, which is great. That does just about half his Rocky Helmet. And he is going to click Knock Up. So... <clears throat> He knows I was Scarfed, I've lost the Scarf, that's annoying, and I'm also in Aqua Jet range now. Does he want to stay in and take another x -Sizzle? He's definitely, is he max defense? He could be, if he's max defense, it's a 48.4 to 57.1, so I've got a very good chance to get KO this thing. Um, whether he'll want to actually stay in, I'm not entirely sure. Um, what does this thing do against my team? Like, it doesn't really check a lot, so I, say, I think he might sack it. This does give him a free... I might click Stone Axe here. I think I take any hit he wants to go for. I live a triple arrows, unless he crits. Um, knockoff did... Uh, I mean, that's a high roll. I think that's a high roll. He must not really be fully attack invested. Right, okay, so we've got rocks up. Is he going to defog? Uh, okay, so I've got rocks up, that's great, that's going to really help with uh, checking things down. It does good default. Okay, um, we can play this game. I don't know if I outspeed anything on his team now. 
So I think I'm going to click key, keep clicking Stone Axe um, until he dies, because I don't outspeed anything now. Uh, Bax is faster, as you can aqua jet me. You don't quite kill, that's annoying. Um, I get my rocks up again. He could attack here, but then he won't be able to get rid of it. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to click Stone Axe again. Um, I think I'll live the... Uh, I will live the uh, Rocky Helmet here, which is nice. Just don't miss. I think he'll click an attack move. He could click Shadow Sneak here, um, which means no rocks up for him, uh, which is annoying. But I do have T-Spikes on Moth, and the fact he'll lose his Defogger is huge. So he switches here. Does he go Jirachi? Treetop. That is Jirachi, because I... So me and Matt both are star. Okay, so we missed. Brilliant. Um, do I value rocks that much? Rocks would kill Decidueye on entry. Exazor would be huge chip on this thing. I'm gonna click Exazor and see if it outspeeds me or not. Which it does. Okay. So Psychic Noise uh, kills me. That's no problem. So actually, Cleaver's down. So he went zero and one, and Rachi is. One and oh, oh I'm sorry, I just hit my microphone. One and oh. Okay, so my play here, he's gonna have a fairy move. I'm pretty confident he's gonna have a fairy move. Um Wicked Blow doesn't kill if he's cold, but if he is uh if I go into Moth. Moth is one of my answers for the um Moth is one of my answers for Azu offensively. Um, if I go Jirachi, let's just say your Calm Mind Wish. Uh, let's just say your Max. So if he's max HP, uh, Shifu kills. How long have I got? 10 seconds. Uh, we could blow just 50. Yeah, so like, I'm going to go Moth. I'm going to go Moth. Um, he could go into Bax. Um, I don't think a psychic move will kill Moth here. So he's, oh, what's that? Something voice. So I could click Fiery Dance um, here and do some huge damage. I think that's what I'm going to have to do because this Rachi is annoying. Um, once the Rachi's weakened, Kyurem kind of goes nuts. Um, I don't know if this one gets Earth Power. Probably should have checked that first. Um, Okay, so he withdraws, does he go into Vax? Because that could be an issue. No, he goes into Madame Fox, which is a Del Fox. So he has to be Scarf to outspeed me. Um, I don't get a special attack boost, which is a shame. Um, but I can go into my Gardevoir here. Quite freely, freely I believe. Um, which is scary because this is my dark cry answer. Um, so and I am boots on what's left over originally. Uh, this thing could terror into fire grass or fighting. So we'll see what it decides to do. Um, here's Blaze. I do have knock up uh, on this thing. So you click side shock. That shouldn't do a lot. I don't think really. Yeah, it doesn't do a lot. Um, and I can't trace regen, which is really frustrating for me actually. I could. Thunder Wave. Um, because crippling the speed on this thing would be nice. I also have, also have got a knockoff. Is he scarfed? He could very well be scarfed. Um, what's your switch into this thing? Do you sack off the. I don't think you really have a switch in to this. I'm going to click not. You could Shadow Ball. Well, I could Shadow Ball too. You could Terror. I think I'm going to click T Wave. Let's see what happens. So he stays in and clicks Flamethrower. That's interesting. Um, my issue here is Gardevoir is just getting so weak. And I need this. Oh, I needed it for the Kyurem. Um, so I can. Is he going to switch and save this thing now? I'm not entirely sure. Um, 
That's Club Shadow Ball. He might go right cheat, I could have clicked Knock. Um, I'm quite glad I did click T-Wave now, because I am on T-Faster than this thing. Um, Scarf Dish, Yifu, and Game is still going to be quite nice here. It's really annoying I didn't get rocks up. <sighs> Getting T-Spikes up would be huge as well. So, okay, that's not going to be a 2 k is it? Is that AB? Okay, full power. That's nice. Um, can I get Knock? Do I click Knock here? Does he save this thing? This is his answer to Moth. This is quite clearly his answer to Moth. I'm going to click Knock. He does switch. Okay, so this Knock's huge. Is he going to go to CGI? Uh, yeah, he goes, he sacks to CGI off. Okay. Because um, Knock will kill. Because it's just at such a low amount of HP. Okay, so Guard uh, kills the CGI. So we're not going to lose uh, 6-0, which is great. Um, and that means if I can get T-Spikes up, then T-Spikes is incredibly free. Um, I think the fact that he switched to Rachi out from the Fiery Dance means that he is going to be Colba over Ocker. So I think if Jirachi comes in here, he's a special Jirachi. Um, which is kind of what I thought would happen. Okay, so he does go Jirachi here. He's gonna click. Do I do I go into He's gonna click. He can't click a psychic move. He has to click Shadow Ball. He has to click a steel move. To which I can't risk the fairy move. So Moth could be a switch in here. But so could a slow U-turn um, on Call of the Night. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save Guard for uh, Whether that's the right play or not, I don't know. Probably the wrong play. Um, but we'll get the slow U-turn off here. Oh, he goes U-turn. Okay, so we don't take much damage from it. But what is he now going to? Um, he might go into Delphox. And he is... Obviously paralyzed, so I think U-turn will outspeed. Yeah. So he does go into this. Um, I could U-turn. I mean, I have Iron Head, Roost. I can't let this thing take too much damage. Um, so I'm going to put U-turn. He's going to click a fire move, like, three. Um, actually, quite a lot of damage. If I rocks up, then this thing would be way less of an issue. I don't think it's boots. I think it has to be AV. Um, do I sack this thing off and hope that I can just take a hit on something with Darkrai? I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, is it what I want to do? Not really. But I don't think I have much of a choice. Like both, like one of my defensive ones is gone. Um, it's going to be in Blaze range now as, as well, actually. Full power? No, yeah, okay. So playing for a kills. That's no problem. Um, so Jirachi backs. I could go into uh, uh, Shifu and click U turn. I could go into. Iron Moth. And then, so hang on, let me just record that. Del Fox kills. Guard. I'm going to now. I'm dead. So, do I want to go back into Corviknight? Not really. Do I want to go into Iron Moth? I mean, I don't think he has anything that can come in safely to Moth after this. So, I'm gonna. Just, just click Sludge Wave. I'm just going to click Sludge Wave because he hasn't got a switch into that whatsoever, um, and that does kill, which is nice. Okay, so uh, what the hell is, is it? Psychic Noise? Is that what it is? Psychic. Psychic Noise. So Jirachi to Iron Moth. Psychic Noise. To 60.4 to 72%. Fiery Dance to 68.3 to 80. 
He goes into Robosaur, which is the Bax's Calibre. Um, my switch into this every single time is going to be Corviknight. Um, this is the only issue, like Corviknight was my only answer to this. Bax and Azu. Bax and Azu is... Like, nothing is going to be able to check that. If he's DD, then I'm going to be absolutely terrified. Uh, he is DD. Okay. Uh, can't consider me terrified. Is he loaded dice? Uh, maybe. I am Scarf Dershifu. If he DDs on me here again, then shit me, I guess. Uh, Backs Caliber. And then if I go into Corbin Knight. So Icicle Spirit plus one is 51 to 61%. Iron Head uh, into Body Press. Body Press does more. So I will click that. He clicks DD again, which might be a misplay. That could be a misplay. It could also win in the game there and then. Um, if he's plus two. Oh shit, okay. Adamant. Oh, he's weakness policy. Okay, I just lose. I just lose the game. Right here, right now. I just lose. Um, I don't think I can live a hit. He's got Thunderfang and he misses. That's huge. Um, huge enough? Not sure. So, does Thunderfang kill? It doesn't. Please don't power me. Okay. Bax is dead. Fuck me, I guess. Um, that thing was terrifying. Uh, I knew DD was going to be an issue. Um, Call the Knight is going to uh, be 1 0. Uh, so, Bax is dead. Decidue is dead. The only issue is now my defensive check to Azu is dead. Um, Boo the Pokemon fan. Okay, um, I think I'm just gonna have to sack this off and click Body Press. Uh, I could click U-Turn in case he decides to Nasty Plot for whatever reason. He clicks Dark Pulse, okay, that's fine. He clicks Dark Pulse. We go where Shifu, we click U-Turn. Every day of the week. He goes Azu, uh, Knight is dead. And Dark Cry is one and oh. Um he could be Chopple. Um What's he what's Matt got left? It's 3v3. Hang on, what am I not recorded as dead? And Del Fox is dead. So he's got Azu, he's got Dark Cry, and he's got Jirachi left. So nothing wants to take a close combat really. I could click Thunder Punch here. Um He'll know I'm scarfed from the way I've brought this in. This is going to be such a close game. It's going to be such a close end game. I've only got offensive threats left, and I feel with the momentum, I can, I can kind of win. I hope he stays in. Absolute mad lad stays in. Um, what's not important to me? I think it's going to be Dino Dave. Kieran on his debut is going to do nothing. Um. Man, I guess it's because Azu is a free switch in for him. He clicks Focus Blast and misses. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. I think I will live any hit he wants to go for. I think I want to click. I think I want to click Ice Beam. What does. Uh, does Dark Cry. Dark Cry. Um. And I am here. Um, so free strike is 44 to 52 if he's not got any HP, but I think he will. Ice Beam does 56 to 67. I like Ice Beam. He switches. Does he go Azu? No, he goes Rachi. Okay. Um, if I had a quick Earth Power there, can I get the freeze just to top this off? Um, I 
think I earth power. Because I think Thunder Punch. I think I'll be okay. I think. Unless he's Belly Dramazu, I think I might be okay. Ice Beam to Rachi, how much did that do? I, I don't think this thing can kill me. Okay, he outspeeds, so he's speed invested. Um, so I click Earth Power. That might be worth keeping Kieran then. Okay, what is that? Is that Salak? No, he's Citrus. So I think I keep this, because if he then wants to Aqua Jet, I don't know if Aqua Jet will kill. Let's check. Um, Azu Mario. Aqua Jet plus 6 to Dino Day does 42 to 49. So this is going to be a roll. This is going to be a roll. Oh god. That's if he's plus, that's if he's plus 6. If he's just choice banned. If his choice band Aqua Jet doesn't even kill me in 2. Um, so I'm going to keep Dino Dave. Purely for the Azu. It's my best. It's my best bet. Like, the freeze dry will kill Darkrai, I think, at this point. He looks like a noise, but I know I'll live. So that's fine. So, what's he gonna do here? Does he go Azu and does he click Aqua Jet on me then? I know he's not wicked. He's not Colder, so how much does. Uh, Shifu do. If this thing takes damage, I think it loses. I think I'm just going to have to click Fiery Dance. If he goes Azu, I think I go Dino Day. This end game is so, it could go either way. Okay, he stays in. That's huge. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, and my special attack rose. Um, this is where we'll find out if he has Aqua Jet. I don't think there's any reason for me to swap out of Moth, because I, outs I get outsped by Darkrai, and uh, Aqua Jet will kill me, so I don't think there's any reason to keep Moth. If he locks himself into Aqua Jet, I click Freeze Dry, because then I think Thunder Punch Endgame will do it for me. Uh, so Rachi goes down, I think that was best case scenario for me. Azu is obviously 0 and 0, Hurem is 0 and 0, and uh, Shifu is 0 and 0. We know Darkrai isn't Scarfed. The way he's not going into Darkrai here, yeah, so he doesn't have Aqua Jet. So I think I sack this thing off. Um, we'll click Sludge Wave. I think that then gives me a free U-turn into uh, U-turn with what's his face. Because then Freeze Dry is free. So I click U-turn. Freeze Dry into so as long as Azu isn't Belly Drum. But he can't have Aqua Jet. He can't have Aqua Jet. He just can't have Aqua Jet. Like. So he lets me kill this thing with Ashifu. Okay. So Ashifu is 1 and 0. Darkrai went 2 and 1. He's putting all his chips on Azumarill. All of his, all of his chips. He might have just played the biggest bluff game of his life. And this thing is going to be a belly drum. Uh, he goes into Eggman. Uh, let's see how much Freeze Dry does here. Freeze Dry, don't click any other button. That's zoom real. If you are a salt vest, Freeze Dry will do. Just HP with AB. It'll do 46 to 53. If he's not AB. Uh, so freeze dry connects. That does so much. So you play roughs. Okay, we win. We win. I think we win. Azu. Um, 
kills Kieran. But Dino Dave put in a hell of a shift there. That chip is enormous. Um, so shout outs to Dino Dave. And then I think I just come in and click Thunder Punch. Um, how do I throw this game? Thunder Punch does 48 to 57% to max HP. Max defense takes 37 to 44. Either way, it's my best move. I click Thunder Punch. If he is whack out, no, what's the berry? He's not. We kill Eggy, we take the 1 0 victory. He was Rocky Helmet. Makes sense. Um, because obviously, uh, Shifu is going to be doing chip damage that thing all the time. Except uh, Shifu came out of top this game. Uh, Shifu was clutch. That is a huge win, a huge relief. Uh, for me. I felt so much pressure coming into this game knowing how good Matt was and obviously it's my grand return to my project from years ago which Jack obviously now is running incredibly well. Way better than I ever did. And it's just nice to get off to a winning start. Um, yeah, really good game to Matt. Like It couldn't have got much closer than that really, I don't think. Um, I think getting the call of the Fiery Dance on the Jirachi was the turning point. Because I think once Jirachi went down, Kyurem was free uh, to like do things. Um, Azumarill was a huge threat against my team, against the six I had. Literally nothing resisted water, um, other than Kyurem, which is weak to play rough, so I'm really, really surprised the game came out the way it did. So really good game, Matt. Um, it was a bit of a grudge match because he told me Norwich City, the actual football team, were terrible, which they are, but it still hurt. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad to kind of get the W on that one. Uh, I haven't played Matt before, it's his first game I've ever played, first game back in the PPL. I know I'm rambling, but I'm just really made up with that result. So I'll leave it at that, guys. Uh, if you've got anything you want to say, then obviously make sure you leave it in the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe to watch the rest of the PPL season, because if all the games are going to be like that, man, it's going to be a really good season. Um, if I can make it to playoffs, then I will be absolutely buzzing, because that's something I haven't done on a Wi-Fi league before. So thank you for watching, guys. Uh, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.